I, I declare over you, everyone you're expecting good news for, let it come speedily. Amen. Either the good news will come as an email, either it will come as a phone call, either it will come as a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I command the good news to come speedily. Amen. Let the good news come speedily. Amen. Every good news you have been waiting for since January, this month of August, let it come speedily. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. you will testify of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. if you believe, shout, I receive it. I receive it. If you believe, shout, I receive it. I receive it. Somebody say grace. grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Say, this is my story. Is my story. Amen. God bless you. you. Can have your seats. All right. Are we ready for the word of God today? Okay, let's get into the word of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, Lord, we just pray for Nigeria. You know what our desire is? And we know we're not asking for too much. We're not asking for too much from our leaders. We're not asking for you for, we're asking you. I will pray for this country. That Lord, grant us leaders that are competent Amen. and have the good hearts to help the people. Amen. Not people that are interested in themselves. This we ask you. If you have to do reshuffling, you can. Have your way and do it your way. Lift our nation and lift our people, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's get into the word of God. Will you please turn your Bibles to, we're going to read some scriptures quickly. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 in verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 in verse 6. The screen guy, are you there? Hosea chapter 4, in verse 6. I'll, I'll just read. It's here. See what the Bible says here. The Bible says, so this morning, I'm talking to you about the power of revelation knowledge or the power of light. The power of revelation knowledge or the power of light. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of prayer. Yes or no? Read again. My people are destroyed for lack of prayer. Yes or no? He says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. He says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So that's the first thing. Um, um, Proverbs chapter 11 verse 9. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alright, so the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 9. An hypocrite mouth, an hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but take note of this. He says, but through knowledge shall what? Shall the just be what? Justified. So I want to really talk to us this morning about the power of revelation knowledge, or I will call it the power of light, or the power of revelation knowledge, or the power of light. One of the things you will notice is this. What is the, what is the cause, or what is the difference why is this so different that two Christians, one of them is enjoying the blessing of God and the other one is struggling? Sometimes the disparity between two Christians is, the, is light. Sometimes the disparity between two Christians is light. It's the fact that someone knows one thing that the other person does not know. Glory to God. So the question is that, you know, I, I have, um, I, when I was praying this message, I remember the family I know very well. And... Um, they all got born again, about three of them, three of them guys. They all got born again at a certain age. And I, you know, I'm, I know the three of them. And one of them is doing so well. The other is doing so well. But the third person is not doing so well. And sometimes you will always ask yourself, why are there two Christians? And one of them is doing so well and the other is not doing so well. Is it because God is not kind or God is not faithful? No. 
the reason for the disparity in the quality of Christian experience is not because God is partial. Look at Romans chapter 10 verse 12. Look at that. Let's balance that. Because sometimes you could think it's a God problem, but it's not really a God's problem. Romans chapter 10 verse, verse 12. Not of, Romans chapter 10 verse 12, not chapter 12 verse 10. Romans chapter 10 verse 12. The Bible says this, For there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek. It says, The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. Meaning that God is, it meaning that God is not biased. Meaning that what God does for A, that God will do for B, under the same situations and under the same circumstances. You know, the reason why I'm saying so is that if you hear a testimony, and please take note of this, if you hear what God is doing for someone, don't get upset. If you hear what God is doing for someone, don't get angry. The reason why is this, what God does for A, it will do for B under the same circumstances. So when you hear a testimony, a testimony shows what is available to all. A testimony shows what is available to all, not what is exclusive to one. So every time you hear testimony that maybe someone got married, that hey, so someone got, got broken from an addiction, someone's you know, life got radically transformed, don't hold back. No, sir. Because God does for one what he can do for any other person. So when you see two Christians that are leaving but they have different experiences, the reason for the difference is not God. It's because of the personal revelation they have. He says there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. He said the same Lord is overall. Every Christian has an unlimited destiny in God. I'm telling you, every Christian, listen to me, every Christian with God, God, there's no way you cannot get to. But everybody knows that. So the question is that I understand that with God, there's no way I cannot get to. But why am I stuck? Why am I stranded? Why am I stuck? Why am I stuck in my relationship? Why am I stranded in my finances? And the reason we are stranded in certain areas is because of the level of revelation that we have. I'll give an example. For 40 days, the Bible says that Goliath was abusing all of Israel. He would abuse them, abuse them, abuse them. One day David got there. And when David got there, David said this. He says, Who are thou uncircumcised Philistine that you are talking to the armies of the living God this way? When he said that question, was there anything David said that no other person could have said? No. The only reason was that David was the one that had revelation. David had a revelation of the covenant that there's no one that can defeat the armies of the living God. Everybody saw Goliath and they saw his size. David saw Goliath and saw the size of God. The question is that what revelation are you walking by? Are you walking by the revelation of the word of God? Hey, listen to me. They, with God, the potential is enormous. With God, the potential is enormous. But your personal experience is going to be based on the revelation of God that you have. Praise God. I said praise God. A lot of you know scientific calculator here. Most of us scientific calculator will never use more than 10 and cost 30. Meanwhile, you know, I'm telling you, you know, sometimes when you see that calculator, you wonder that, why did they make it so complex? Because all the buttons we use in calculator are just about four. Apart from the normal addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. The reason why, it's not as if the calculator cannot do a lot. But the calculator is limited by the hand that is on it. Praise God. Can I get a pen? Can I get a pen? I, I, I thought I held the pen earlier on. Yeah, can I get a pen? Yeah. Look at this pen. <laughs> The power of this pen is whose, whose pen this hand is in. Praise God. Hallelujah. If Dangote get this pen and write, what will he write? If a secondary school student get this pen, write. Same pen is whose hand is in it. The question is that it's not as if you don't have something potentially. Is that do you know who you have? Do you know what you have? Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So there's difference between a successful Christian and sometimes a Christian that is, you know, a Christian that is, you know, that is struggling is the difference is light. The difference is revelation knowledge. 
the difference is revelation knowledge the difference revelation knowledge and i, I was i gave some practical examples i, I said I, I said in the earlier service i said i will tell you a story but i i don't know why they share this story because you know just because of applications i remember some years ago i remember some years ago um i used to live at um um is that place now ogudu jra ogudu jra is just a little stone through from bagada so i will leave at bagada church and just drive through when you descend to milan bridge and walk through ogudu and this i want to show you the power of light and you know i was going through I, I, you know i was going through and from nowhere this guy my, my window was wound down this guy just came with a gun and came into the car and said give me your i said give me your phone you know i, I don't know if i've experienced all of that snatch phones from inside traffic before he said give me your phone listen to me and this is a power of light light means revelation knowledge from nowhere listen to me i stand before the almighty god so i'm not going to exaggerate i know people pack a testimony but this is not one of them from nowhere and let me say something to them if i could think i'm not sure i'll repeat what i did from nowhere i said give me your phone from nowhere i just shouted in the name of jesus and the guy ran off Listen to me, eh? if I can think, I will carry my phone. Because bullet and life and phone are not equal. No, you know some of you say that, you know, no, I'm me, I'm telling you practical. Uh, what, what is phone? Won't you buy another one? You will carry, if he shoots you now, even though it doesn't kill you, but you lose your hand, can you replace your hand? I, I just can't, okay, take your phone and go away. You know, but there's something about having light that when you are in trouble, light you shut up. There's something about having light. Any area a Christian is struggling, it's not because God is not faithful. It's not because God has not answered prayer. The reason why the Christian is struggling in that area is because he does not have enough revelation knowledge. He said, my people are destroyed, not because they lack anointing. He said, the reason why they're paralyzed is because of the lack of knowledge. They don't know what they have. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So one of the things you have to go for as a Christian is light. Light standing for revelation knowledge. You need to go for light. Revelation, sorry, John chapter 1 verse 5. 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 See what the Bible says. He said, and the light shines. He says, and the light shines. He says, the light shines. He said, a hey, believer, what makes you shine is light. Stop thinking in your career. What you need is to shine with light. He said, and the light shines. Revelation. Revelation makes you shine. He says, and the light shines in darkness. And darkness cannot overturn it. He said, darkness cannot overturn it. Glory to God. The absence of light is the source of the believer's issue. The absence of light is the source of the believer's issue. Anywhere there's darkness is because light is absent. So, if you notice that in your health, you're experiencing darkness because light is missing. If you notice in your career, things are slow, light is missing. Listen to me. In this kingdom, we walk by the principles of light. In this kingdom, we advance by knowledge. We walk by the principle of light. And that's why a Christian that is born again but has no light will be limited. He will be limited not because God does not love him. He will be limited because he has no revelation. Please believe me honestly. Please believe me honestly. Every Christian can be a high flyer. Every Christian can move higher when it comes to their career. Every Christian can live above sin. Every Christian can have a powerful business. But the reason why we're limited is not because God is not faithful. It's because there is no light. It's because there's a... And that's something we have to do for our own selves. Glory to God. I said 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 glory to God. For 40 days, Goliath kept on oppressing them and saying something to them. When David got there, what did David do? David just walked on light. He just said, 
Who art thou uncircumcised Philistine? That thou defilest the armies of the living God. Many of you don't understand what he was saying. What he was saying was this. David took the battle from saying Israel is fighting Philistine. He took it to a higher realm. He took it from a spiritual realm. He says, number one, who are you that you are uncircumcised? Uncircumcision was the sign of the covenant. Covenant means, let, let me tell you what covenant means. Uh, in the olden days, in the, in the olden days, this is what covenant used to be. There will be a family that is very strong in, um, they are very strong in military power, but they don't have food. So you know what they will do? They will go into a covenant with a family that is a strong in famine. And the covenant will be like, as long as we are alive, the farmers will provide us the food. But as long as we are alive, nobody can attack the farmers because what? The soldiers will protect the farmers. So the farmer and the soldiers are now on one. They are linked together by covenant. So when he said to Goliath, he says, who are thou on circumcised Philistine? What he was saying to Goliath is that you, that you have no connection or backing. He says to defile, now look at what they call Israel. He says, you open your mouth and defile the armies of the living God. How did Israel become the armies of the living God? He said, Israel's are not protected by themselves. They are in covenant with God. So the soldiers that are angels are the ones that are backing up Israel. Praise God. If you have light, when someone says, I will show you, he said, I will show you back. The reason why is that light is working. Are you here, somebody? Yeah. Listen, David said that. He says, who are thou to defile the armies? Because it was not just bluffing. He says, who are you to defile what the armies of the living God? Question, when did Israel become the armies of the living God? Israel was in covenant with God. God had made covenant to protect them. He was going to protect them by angelic forces. So what he was saying was that if you can touch Israel, you can touch angels. But because you cannot win angels, you are done. Praise God. There's something in the story of David and Goliath that most people have never seen. Most people have never seen. And I'm going to ask somebody. We, 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 come, come, come. Yeah, Chuma, come. Yeah. The Bible says this. Watch this. The Bible says, and David told Goliath, he says, I will kill you. And I will cut off your head from his shoulder. It's in the Bible though. He says, I will kill you and cut off your head from his shoulder. You know what the Bible says? The Bible recorded that and David had what? No sword. So, his incompetence could not hold him back. Guess what he did? I want to show you something. I want to show you what happened. Because most of you don't understand what happened about covenant. David took the stone. Stone Goliath. Most of you think that it was when the stone, it was when the stone hit David, M. Goliath, that Goliath died. I don't think so. I think what God was doing was looking for someone to make the move and let the angel walk. How do I know? Let me tell you how I do. As soon as the stone hit Goliath, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, Goliath fell, what? Forward. Fall forward. Watch this. How can, you did physics, Abby? How can a, how can a stone hit in the forehead and you fall forward? It meant that what really killed you was back. Are you listening to me? What the angel was looking for was that take this step, let me act. Until you take this step, you cannot see the glory of God. As soon as David took the step, the angel behind said, You idiot. Angel summoned him. Swah, he went down. That's you know why it was that death of that death of Goliath was a death by the armies of the living God. It was the armies of the living God that took over. Are you here? Yes, but the question is this, and this is a question. Get up, sir. This is a question. The question is this. Why was it only David that stood up to it? It was not because David was special. It was because David had revelation. When you have revelation, when all that does not work, it will work for you. The reason why is that you will produce not according to what is there. You will produce according to what? Revelation. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Thank you, sir. Anywhere darkness is operating, anywhere. Someone says, I'm struggling in my marriage. You need revelation. Someone says, I'm not married. You need revelation. 
Saul says, my finance, you need revelation. Anywhere dark, anywhere you are not shining, the reason why you are not shining is because you don't have light. Because once you have light, the Bible says, and light shines in darkness. Ah, I don't know, I can't stop masturbation and pornography. You need revelation. One of my friends told me, he said, that I was struggling sexually. And what is revelation? Revelation is when the written word comes alive, it catches fire. It's almost as if that scripture will just jump out. Hey, it's like, I've been reading this all my life. I've been, I've been reading this all my life. Oh, I just jump. Hey, whoa, whoa. Jesus. It's as the scripture catches fire. One of my friends told me he was dealing with his sexuality and all of those kind of things. And he said to me, he said, I read the scripture. He said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from love. He said, and sin shall not have dominion over me. He said, I'd always done that scripture. He said, but this day, that scripture just jumped out. That sin shall not have dominion over me. I cannot say sin shall not have dominion over me. That means that when I feel the need to do pornography, I can say no because sin shall not have dominion. It's no longer scripture. That's revelation. That's revelation. It, it has come alive. Revelation. Sin shall not have dominion. Oh, I can walk out of it. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come. Sin shall not have dominion over me. I can stop the masturbation. Sin shall not have dominion. You know why sin has dominion over you? The reason why is that because in your mind, you think you can't. Someone said, let's do 30 days of celibacy. Hey, I will just die. That's the problem. That's the problem. Ah, 30 days of no. Hey, Brando. Hey, hey, 30 days to know. Bye, bye. Because in your mind, it's impossible. But the, that's the thing. See, revelation helps you see what is possible. Revelation helps you see that sin shall not have what? Dominion over me. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. I mean, Phenom is there. How, how, how much secret are you smoking a day at some point? What? Give me the microphone. Take this one. That's just slow for me. Yeah. How many cigarettes are you smoking in a day at some point? Packs. What is packs? How many packs? Like three or four, two or one. One pack. What? More than one. So let's say, how many cigarettes in the pack? I can't remember. I stopped a while ago. You can't remember. But, but, but is it more than 10 in the pack? Oh, of course, yeah. More than 20 in the pack? I think about 12, though. I think. Uh, about 12. Yeah. And every day who smoke 12. If someone had told you you would stop smoking, would you, would you, would you believe it? No. I laughed the day my talk, doctor told me I, I needed to stop. It got so bad, his doctor told him. But see, when it says sin shall not have dominion. How far now? <laughs> Praise God. And this is someone that was most 12 secret, 15 secret, 12 secret. It's a revelation. It's that sin shall not have dominion. You know why you are defeated? You are defeated first in your mind. Oh, it's not possible. Oh, it's not possible. It's not possible. Listen to me. As a girl, you cannot make you that someone sleeping with you. It, you can't. That's the, that's the reason why you are defeated. Because in your mind, you said you can't. But some of the ladies are saying that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That the Lord is a lifter up of my head. Hey, capo. The Lord is a lift. It's revelation that is working. So for you, for you, this is how it works. When you have revelation that... The Lord is the lift of my head. That I don't have to sleep around to get the help. Then that revelation will lead you to where that is. Then you will find people that will lift you without having to see your pants. But when you say it's impossible, that revelation will lead you to people that will say, we must see your pants to do something. Praise God. So I'm going to say that I can never do well in this country. You are correct. You will never do well. Because that's what you believe. The Bible says you become what you believe. You know what I believe? I believe that if I'm here, I do well. If I move to Canada, I do well. 
if I move to UK, I do well. Why? The revelation says, anywhere the soul, hey, come on. anywhere the soul of my feet shall step upon, I do well. If I sell water, I do well. If I sell sun, I do well. If I sell all, I do well. Anywhere I am, I do well. The blessing of glory to God. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. And they say, anywhere am I too well? Stand on your feet and say it. I'll say, anywhere am I too well? Praise God. He didn't say, Tinubu is my shepherd, I shall not want. He said, the Lord. He said, the Lord. He said, the Lord. He's my shepherd, I shall not want. Let me hear you shout, Amen. Amen. He said, when men said there's a casting now, he said, they said, dollar is rising, rise is rising. He said, me, 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 I shall say, there is a lifting up, the lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. Praise God. Please have your seat. The reason why I'm saying this is, you become what you believe and what you believe is based on the revelation that you have what's your revelation you know Peter said something powerful Peter said Peter said just because that was Christ Jesus Christ said flesh and blood did not reveal that to you what's your revelation revelation is information that comes outside senses it's only goes put it there so to your senses, it doesn't make sense. How can you say when message is a casting down, we say there's a lifting up? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But that's what revelation is. It's information that comes by the spirit. There's no way I can know that. You, they look at you and say, ah, I don't think you can get married. They are right. Naturally speaking, you can't get married. Naturally speaking, you can't get the job. Naturally speaking, you can't get the approval. But there's a revelation. Revelation says, whose report will you believe? Revelation says, it says, who is it that commanded when God has not said so? That's what Revelation says. That, that's why as a child of God, it's not over for you. Are, are you hearing me? You may have nobody to help, but the Bible says all things are possible. To him that believe, I'm a believer, all things are possible. To him that believe, how will you raise the money? All things are possible. To him that believe, how will you get clients? All things are possible. To him that believe, how will you get the approval? All things are possible. To him that believe, how will you get married? All things are possible. To him that believe, oh glory, glory, glory. Lipo shalabayaka. All things are possible to him that believes. That was the same day way. They asked Mary, how will you get pregnant? Mary said, the, the angel said, the power of the Holy Ghost shall overshadow. Paul Shalabaya. Listen to me, we are not ordinary people. We are not here to play church. Uh, 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 uh. When we got born again, we receive the Holy Ghost. The power of God resides on the inside of us. The power of God works with us. The power of God moves with us. We live from the inside outside. We are no ordinary people. Greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. If you believe, shout Amen. Atabalabaya. <laughs> you keep looking at yourself the wrong way you are big on the inside and on the outside he said greater is he that is in me stop looking at yourself outside you say i'm just a 40 year old man hey shut up look at yourself on the inside the one that made the heavens and the earth stays inside you he said greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world they say how will you raise the hundred million greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world they say who do you know he said greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world dollar is high greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world there's no sales greater is he that is in me than he yeah come on over yeah Ligo robo shalabayango ebayagaba salebokobo Greater is he that is in me. The doctor said, Madam, 
oh i'm sorry you have peace your ass you said doctor don't worry we can fix it he said where are we you said greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world you know what i'm trying to do elevate your thinking your thinking is too low you need to come up come up yeah, yeah, yeah. come up praise god i said praise god i said praise god what elevates your thinking revelation revelation is god's tool to elevate your thinking because your senses can't believe it's possible your senses says as a girl what can you achieve nothing look at your family there's nothing then you now begin to remember gideon gideon was a nobody when the anointing came of him he became a somebody you remember david a boy in the backside when the anointing came on him he became a somebody Praise God. Stop talking like the rest. You are different. He said, You're a chosen generation. A, a royal priesthood. He said, You're a chosen. Chosen means that they looked at many, they picked you, they picked, they picked. I'm not like the rest. I'm a chosen generation. I was chosen to succeed. I was chosen for progress. I was chosen to be sanctified. Oh, somebody say, Hallelujah. He says we're a chosen generation. You know the point is that you are still playing church. That's the problem. Christianity is not about church. It's the life of God in a man. We are custodian of eternal varieties. Oh, Rabbi Yanta. We are custodian of eternal varieties. He says that we are partakers of the divine nature. We are partakers of the divine nature. Praise God. hallelujah there was a man called um, John G. Lake you can google this this is a this is recorded you can go on YouTube I love to tell stories you can google there was a virus outbreak like COVID during their own time about 100 or 200 years ago but this was documented in medical history so John G. Lake used to pray for the sick so the doctors now called him I think it was called Ebola Bobola virus, thank you. You know, it's so common that someone can even tell me the name here. Bobola virus, it broke out. Bobola virus, just like COVID, killing people. And John G. Lake was praying for the sick and they would get healed. So the doctors told him that he would soon catch the virus and die. Because, you know, John G. Lake said, that's the problem. He said that the scripture says, I shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover, not that I will catch the virus. They catch my health, I don't catch their sickness. So he now told the doctors, he says, let's take this further. Let's test the power of God in the, in the, in the laboratory. It's online. Go ahead and Google it today. John G. Lake Bobola virus. Google it. So, so you know what they did? They took a blood sample of his. So under the microscope, they took the Bobola virus and put in the blood sample. As soon as the blood virus, as the virus touches blood, they died. I'm telling you what men have experienced though. Because you, you say you're a Christian. Where is your own experience? You, you say you're because you see things about coming to church and say, "Hey, I got the light of God and do and then that's like this. I say, "Hey, hey bum, 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 bum. no, that is more than that now." <laughs> Praise God. Where is your teeth where you cannot cast out demons? Where is your teeth where you can't cast out demons? You need to step up in your thinking. Real men like us, the men, John G. Lake, such depth, such depth of revelation. So much that it was documented. What did they know? The difference between them and us was revelation. Anywhere you're struggling, you're struggling because you don't have what? Revelation. So I'll say, hey, you know. <laughs> There was a guy that his life was tough. You know, in fact, I have many testimonies. One lady in the US, she could be watching right now. She sent me a message. She said, I'm just tired. I've joined next level. Pray, 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 pray. This and this and this and this. I, I wish I could show you the testimony, but there's no time. But I will show you one day. So she contacted me. She said, Pastor, I just, I'm going to do something dangerous. So they, they just reached me. And I said, 
this is what I want you to do. Listen to this, listen to that. Write down this confession, say it every day. She did it for two weeks and said, things have gotten worse. I said, I didn't say do it for two weeks. Continue. Recently, I just saw the message and she sent me a message last year. I said, Pastor, thank you. She showed me the frame of where she wrote all the things I said. She did a picture frame in her room. He said, I will remember. He said, this is one year after. Everything has turned around. My career, my businesses. He said, I'm, he said, I'm now married. He says, Pastor, all you did was point you to revelation. And that was it. Anywhere darkness is, is because light is not there. Because light shines in darkness. John 1, 5. And darkness cannot comprehend it. Light shines in darkness. And darkness can't comprehend it. And let me say something to you. Listen to me. You can have light when it comes to marriage. And not have light when it comes to finances. Someone says, what do you mean? The area where you have the biggest challenge is where you have the lowest light. The area where you have the biggest challenge is where you have what? The smallest light. Because darkness is the proof that light is not there. So you can be, some of you are here, when it comes to career, so well. But once it gets to marriage, and the reason why is that there's no light in that area. And you know the thing, instead of you to build up yourself in that area, you keep on building yourself in career. You need to look for where you are struggling the most and begin to build up revelation knowledge in that area. How do you build revelation knowledge in that area? You begin to get verses of scripture about that area. You begin to get what they call it, teachings about that area. You keep listening and listening, listening until light breaks out. Look at Proverbs chapter 11 verse 9 again. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. See, an hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But true knowledge, not true prayers. He said true knowledge shall the just. The person is just already be delivered. He said your deliverance is going to come through knowledge. True knowledge. True knowledge shall the just be delivered. Light shines in darkness. Ah, yeah. Things are tough, but get light on success and you will shine. Light shines in darkness. It says, upon how tough, how is this? It said, darkness cannot comprehend it. What you lack is revelation. And the reason why you like revelation is like that you are you keep playing church. It's so to sit down with the teaching, write notes, go home and study. No, you will not study. He said, Light. He says, The nature of light is that it shines. So if you are not shining in your career, you don't have career lights. If you are not shining in marriage, you don't have marital lights. If you are not shining financially, you don't have financial lights. God is faithful, but get light. God is faithful. Get light. He said light shines in darkness. Nigeria is not your problem. You need to get light. Nigeria is a factor, but not your only problem. There are people that even if Satan is not in the equation, they still will not succeed. You know why? Because they don't understand the spiritual principles that brings about success where they are. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 2, I found so I'm not reading it. When I was a younger pastor, this many years ago, we had a small fellowship that wasn't doing so well. And I was like, Lord, you've come in to bless people. Why are people not coming? And light broke out from Isaiah chapter 2. He said, the mountain of the Lord hill shall be exalted far above the valley. He said, and people shall flow onto it. Ah! He said, people shall flow. I saw it. He said, people shall flow onto it. He said, people shall flow. There will be so many, we can't count them. When I was being relocated to the Lekki church, they told me, they said, Lekki people don't come to church. First service, if you get 100, you are lucky. They told me all sorts. Like they told you, Nigeria don't do well. Nothing goes here. I said, well, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by the word of God. I came, I began to declare. 
people flow people flow people flow covid or no covid the church kept expanding this time last year our church was one third of this auditorium when we say we want to expand it to three times the size so I say, yeah, we can release service to one i said you'd be surprised that by the time we are done with the expansion the people will have expanded just like we said we finished the expansion people have expanded this is not service now they've been waiting outside for the past one hour why light it's not lock is light it's not lock is what light on this street alone there are almost 20 churches they would rather prefer to stay outside under the sun than to go for the next service it's light when you have revelation you can't be resisted light makes you attractive he said men shall come to the brightness of your shining light makes you attractive light makes you attractive light makes you attractive ladies and gentlemen go for light ah, ah, one year no guy has told tell me you don't have light you have makeup but you don't have light that's the problem you have makeup no light you have lipstick no light get light and see transformation you advertise on TikTok. You advertise this one. You even pour water. Uh, everybody's rushing us now. Nobody's rushing reality. You have no light. Look how it says Isaiah 60 verse 3. It says, And Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness of thy what? Of the rising. There's something that makes them come to you. It's light. And what is light? light is revelation of the word how does light come number one consistent study of the scriptures you know let me tell you how this works when light start coming to you the first thing it does is this it begins to fix your mindset because most of us is the mindset that's the problem you cannot even see yourself getting married you can't it's not it's not even devil it's you can't see yourself let me tell you something that you'll be surprised when we get to heaven how many things you say Satan did I say I'll say I didn't know about it I was singles were having a meeting sometime soon I was ministering to single girls above 40 I did a special meeting because I wanted to help them get married so I now said to do something I wanted to show them the power of that most of them had negative mindset about marriage and they have not seen their marriages but they didn't agree because everybody will argue that they were single girls it's the man is the man is the man i said okay i agree i said this weekend all of you go take a wedding gown and wait just test it how you fit in the wedding gown one girl sent me a message she said i went to the wedding gown store they gave me my size when it was time to wait i broke down started crying he said what i said then you're called to me I had never seen myself married mentally. He said, I couldn't wait. She was praying. She didn't know that her mindset was a problem. The first thing light does is to it will illuminate your mind. The darkness in the mindset is to shoot it out. Some of you are praying for one million. Sincerely, you don't know what 100,000 is. I say, ah, come on, billion, billion, billion. You don't even know what you're praying for. You don't even know what you're praying for. It's light that will show you that there needs to be adjustment in the mental region. When you start, let me tell you something, eh? When you take light, the first thing you notice is the effect of light on you. Can we talk? I'm not cursing anybody. Yo. Many of you, by your background, you are, you are programmed for divorce. Some people are programmed for failure. Some people are programmed for poverty. Some people are programmed to do well and crash later it's a programming it came from your childhood it came because you absorbed your environment the way you correct the programming is to expose yourself to another kind of light why genesis 1 16 he said the greater light rules the day anywhere there's light it rules the darkness look at what it says he said and god made to light and the greater light to rule because light always rule so when you introduce light it will rule the day and did you see that it made the great light through the day what does that mean every time you have light you are in the daytime of your life 
every time there's no light, you're in darkness. Light. And night means that you are in the season of your life where things don't happen, things are slow, and the walk of darkness manifests. Because the Bible calls it the walks of darkness. So every time there's light, you are in the daytime. The daytime means the season of expansion, of visibility, of progress. But what determines what season you are is not your age. What determines what season you are is not your industry. It's the revelation that determines either you are in the day or you are in the night. What do you have to do? Get light. How do you get light? Consistent study the Bible. Number two, consistency in the local church. Because every time you come to church, the pastor's teaching is light. Is light. Is light. Is breaking things off you. The third way you get light. So that's the second way you get light. The third way you get light is by serving and mentoring. When you come close enough, you will not begin to see. By association, light can rub on you. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord, give me discipline to go for light. That's all the prayer. Lord, give me discipline to go for revelation. Lord, give me discipline to go for revelation. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, give me discipline to go for revelation. Lord, give me discipline to go for revelation. Lord, give me discipline to go for revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you bring everyone into a discipline where we'll go for revelation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.